Welcome to this coffee talk here in Q&A. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little about speaking tongues because there's a lot of misunderstanding out there when it comes to, to speaking tongues and, and what it is. And I'll try to do it very short. First, some of the misunderstanding is uh, that some people say that when you speak in tongues, it had to be a, not a language where people understand it because the focus of Book of Acts chapter 2. Other people again say that speaking tongues should only happen in church when there is two or other people who can interpret or interpret what you are saying because they are focused on our, some of the things Paul is saying in Corinthians. And other again is saying that speaking tongues is for everyone and you have to just speak and when you speak in tongues you speak not to man but to God because it's a personal prayer language. So there is different views on it and that depends on what scripture they are focused on. How I see it is that all those things are true. That speaking tongues sometimes is what people from other languages understand it. Speaking tongues sometimes is where people need to be there to interpret it. And sometimes speaking tongues is the personal language. Because there is different kind of tongues. And I think this is where people sometimes make mistakes when it comes to speaking tongues. And if you look at Corinthians, the book of Corinthians, Paul wrote where he's talking about the gifting, was not written to a Baptist church today, or Lutheran church, or Catholic church, or Pentecostal church. That book was written to the church in Corinth, to those people who have already experienced the different kind of tongues, already knew how it was working. And because they already have the different kind of tongues and knew how it was working, then they did not get confused in Paul's letter the same way that many people do today. And I can explain it. Uh, when people receive the Holy Spirit and get baptized with the Spirit in the Book of Acts, very often you read that they just speak in tongues and prophesy or speak in tongues and worship God. And in many cases, that is their personal tongues, where they speak a tongues where nobody needs to interpret it, and a tongue where nobody understands it. Uh, this is where what Paul is talking about in Corinthians. Uh, 14 verse 2 where he said when you speak in tongues you speak not to man but to God because nobody understands you and you actually edifying yourself and you're speaking mystery to God. That tongue is a prayer language we believe is for everyone who received the Holy Spirit and it's a gift God gave to everyone. But there's also other tongues. There is the tongues where you can be in a meeting and suddenly people stand up and speak in a loud tongues, in a different tongues, where everybody becomes quiet and that tongues cannot stand alone. There you need somebody who can interpret it or interpret it. And I've experienced that where I've been at meetings and suddenly somebody stand up and speak loud in tongues and then me or somebody else afterward get like the interpretation and we can then share it loud and it can edify the church. This is one of the other tongues and the, another tongue again is what you also saw in Pentecost where I believe they speak in the person tongues but also they spoke where people from other languages understood them. Uh, a year ago I was out shopping and, and when I came out the shop a guy came to me to ask for money and I started to talk with him and he was a satanist. He was black all over and had satanic uh, contact, <laughs> contact lenses like cat eyes and he had 666 tattooed on his hand and his clothes and he was just dark, dark, dark. And at one time I said, can I pray for you? And I just put my hands and pray for him and command that demon to leave. And he started to cough and something left him. And it was actually really, really strong. But there I experienced something I never experienced like this before. Suddenly I felt an urge to just speak to him in tongues. And I put my hands on him and I looked at him and I said, Shulodokoski salata, gaska salata. Not like that, but almost like that. I spoke to him in tongues. But when I did it, it was like my tongues changed. Not like I understood it, but there was a little change in it. 
Afterward, when I'd been speaking to him in tongues, he just looked back with big eyes and said, like, wow, like he has seen God. And, and, and he said, how did you know? And I looked at him a little confused. What do you mean? Where have you learned our language? I said, what do you mean? And he said, me and my brother, when we were younger, we developed a code language that only me and him understood. And we could speak to each other in that language. But you have just been speaking to me about God in that language. <laughs> and it was so powerful. And when I left that place, that guy, he was standing with the eyes out like this and <laughs> looking in the heaven and was worshiping God. <laughs> And there I experienced for the first time exactly like that, that uh, like that, that people understood it with other languages. And I believe much of the confusion there is about tongues today is because people have not experienced those different kind of tongues as they did in the early church and that we are experience more and more and more now. But you more, the more we come in and experience the life with God, the more we come in and experience those different kind of tongues in our personal life, in our, in our meetings, or when we are out there reaching people with the gospel. You, the more we experience those things, you more clear with what Paul is saying in Corinthians become for people. So I hope this small video can help you with some of the confusion out there. See the Pioneer School, where I take more, talk more about that. And go to the map and find people near you who can pray for you if you don't have the personal tongues, if you are not baptized with the Holy Spirit. Let them help you, let them disciple you, so you can also go in and come in and experience this amazing gift and this amazing tool God has given us to come into a strong prayer life and relationship with Him. So God bless you.